months. You said it felt lighter and felt like it was going it faster. Did, definitely. Feel and real aren't always the same thing. The average after you swung the weighted club was 162.7. It didn't change the ball speed a ton, but it definitely changed distance. If your thought is, okay, let's swing a weighted club before my first tee, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you 30 yards of carry on the first That's tee. the last thing you want to do on the first tee. Just like in baseball, the weighted warm-up throws off timing and technique. And Dave misses the sweet spot. Missing the sweet spot by a few millimeters costs Dave an average of 30 yards off the tee. And if it makes such a big difference for a pro, imagine what a difference those millimeters can make for the rest of us. So whether you're batting or driving, when warming up, our advice is to lose the weight. Next on Sports Science, it's a cliche every football kicker is taught. The trick is to kick with the laces out. But does it really make a difference? NFL star Sebastian Janikowski kicks it in the lab. When we return with more of Sports Science, Tricks of the Trade. From Pee Wee to the NFL, every coach at every level repeats one mantra to his kickers. Laces out. Why? Does it really make a difference whether you kick the ball with the laces in or the laces out? For the answer, we brought in NFL kicker Sebastian Janikowski. With one of the strongest legs in football, Janikowski makes 80% of his field goals. It takes a lot of confidence to be the guy they call into the field in the clutch. My favorite kicker? Me. To find out if there is really a difference between kicking with the laces in and the laces out, we fit Sebastian with wireless accelerometers and an APOC to help calculate the carry of his ball. We're going to know exactly how much force you hit the ball with, how much momentum the ball's carrying through, and how far that ball's going to travel. It's amazing. I'm ready for it. Let's do it. First, Sebastian takes 10 kicks with the laces out. The average linear velocity of his foot is 69 miles per hour. At launch, the ball registers 63. Our sensors calculate a projected ball flight averaging 59 yards. Who's the hot guy, man? Who's the good looking Polish fella? He's smoking. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Now, Despite everything he's ever been taught, Sebastian takes 10 more kicks. This time with the laces in. For the laces in kicks, the velocity of Sebastian's leg is identical. Still 69 miles per hour. And the ball speed is also consistent 63 miles an hour. He was always kicking the exact same mechanics every single time. But the high speed footage reveals a subtle and surprising difference. All of Sebastian's kicks with the laces out leave his foot with almost zero sideways rotation, ensuring accuracy. But Sebastian's kicks with the laces in start to betray him just after they leave his foot. The ball begins to rotate on its vertical axis, and after just six inches, it has already rotated 15 degrees. Six inches later, it's at 30 degrees. And within a few more inches, the ball has already spun 45 degrees. 
The leather laces, raised just a couple millimeters above the surface of the ball, are enough to affect solid contact between shoe and ball. So how much could that affect Sebastian's kick? Over the length of a 40-yard field goal, a ball kicked with the laces in will rotate sideways approximately 25 times and veer as far as 10 feet off course, which could easily be a decisive amount since the kicker's target is only 18 and a half feet wide. And if he's kicking for distance, that kind of rotation could cause enough curve to turn a 60-yard kick into a 53-yarder. It's coming around. Nope, short. Nope, we were short by two yards. So it looks like the coach knows what he's talking about. If you want to kick like the pros, stick to the conventional wisdom and point the laces out. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> Next on Sports Science, one of the best pool players on the planet breaks down the angles as she attempts the impossible. Sink a dozen balls in a single shot. Can it be done? Find out when we return with more of Sports Science. Tricks of the Trade. Pool. It's both a simple game and infinitely complex, where science is always on the table. In both eight ball and nine ball pool, the record for most balls sunk on one shot is eight. What we want to know is, how many balls can be sunk at once? Is it possible to sink a dozen balls in a single shot? To find out, we called the woman known for devouring her opponents. The black widow herself, women's world champ, Jeanette Lee. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, glad to be here. So what we want to look at is the number of crazy angles it takes to make a seemingly impossible shot and pull. Okay, sounds good. To sink a dozen balls with a single stroke of the cue, Jeanette has to know the science of her sport because she deals with physics, trigonometry, and geometry. This is a game of accuracy, precision, excellence. It's a game of tiny angles. The angle most amateur pool players are familiar with is 90 degrees. The 90 degree rule states that the cue ball comes out of the collision with the object ball at a path that's 90 degrees to the path that the object ball takes. No options here. If the object ball goes in a certain direction, the cue ball has to go at 90 degrees to that direction, unless you use English. English, when you put all kinds of fancy spin on the ball. The force of the strike, the angle of the cue stick, and the point of impact are variables which control the amount of English applied to the cue ball. Using English is critical for position play. Draw, backspin on the cue ball. Masse, extreme spin on the ball. If you combine these things, you can get the cue ball to end up almost anywhere you like, at least if you're Jeanette Lee. In fact, with her knowledge of physics and the ability to impart English, she can make shots that appear to be impossible. I'm going to try to take the cue ball and cut the 13 ball in that corner pocket. And the reason why it seems impossible is because this would be 90 degrees, and this is beyond 90 degrees. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing is using English to come out and go back in to cut the ball in the pocket. So that's how Jeanette rolls. It's time to rack him up and put Jeanette's mastery of science to the test. Jeanette is ready to attempt a seemingly impossible shot. 12 balls at once. 12 balls, one shot. What are the number of things that have to go right? 50 million things have to go right, but I can do it today. To pull it off, Jeanette has zero margin of error.
Nicely done. Nicely done. That's how we do it. 12 balls in a single shot. How did she do it? Our motion tracking technology breaks down this remarkable shot. Jeanette's shot is an intricate chain reaction, utilizing several different types of collisions. The cue ball barrels into the 14 and 5 simultaneously and continues forward, now rolling with what's called follow or topspin. The next collision creates side spin on each ball. And like gears meshing, a counterclockwise spin imparts clockwise spin. This is called throw, and the 10 and the 4 have perfect rotation and momentum to follow the next target balls into the corners. Meanwhile, the collisions with the 10 and 4 cause the 7 and 13 to back up, or draw into another collision, throwing those balls into the corners. The resulting impact throws the 7 and 13 into the side pockets the physics of English, draw, follow, and throw. Jeanette sings 12 balls with a single stroke of the cue. A shot like this has zero margin of error, because like all chain reactions, if there's one weak link, if her stroke is too hard, too soft, or misaimed by a single millimeter, the chain breaks. One millimeter is the difference between 12 balls in one shot and a whole lot of nothing. Wow, 12 balls, one shot. Don't call it impossible. I never call anything impossible. Impossible? No way. Just a trick of Jeanette's trade. That's why she's the Black Widow, and the rest of us are just waiting to be devoured. In this episode of Sports Science, we've studied curves and swerves, fingertips and tiptoes. We've pulled back the curtain to reveal the secrets of some of the world's best athletes. And one thing they all have in common is the knowledge that games always come down to the little things. Millimeters. Angles. And fractions. The little things that mean the difference between second and second to none. The reasons athletes spend lifetimes perfecting their tricks of the trade.